Okay, pre-calculus, we are in Unit 5, Day 2, solving trig equations on an interval this time now. I've got Pikachu with me, so if you hear some squawking, that is what is happening. This is just like last class. We're going to do the problems just like last class, except for our general form of our solution. It's not going to be the last step. We're going to have to list all the possible solutions that are on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and start with example 1. So it's asking to find all the solutions on a particular interval. So 1, we're going to solve the trig equation, just like we did last class. 2, we're going to write the general form of the solution, just like we did last class. And then 3, we're going to use that general form to list out all the solutions until they get larger than 2 pi, and then we're going to stop. Okay? So go ahead and um, I, I see both of these terms have a cosine squared. So I factored out a cosine squared. Now I can use the zero product property to set each of these factors equal to zero. So I'm going to get, when I add, add one to both sides and divide by two, I'm going to get sine is one half. And the cosine, that's just being, maybe the cosine is zero. So where does that happen? Here and here. So we've got x equals pi over two plus pi k. Okay, there's our general solution. Over here, where is sine of x equal to 1 half? Well, these are small angles, but you can barely tell on my little graph here. So that's x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. So you have to go around to get to back to pi over 6. And then the other one is at 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. Now, in our last problem, if we were asked to find the general solutions, we would just stop right there. However, they're not asking for every single solution. We, if we went around, and then we went around again, and then we went around again, they are asking for just the solutions that are on 0 to 2 pi. So we can already see Pikachu move. I shouldn't be recording with Pikachu here. We've got x equals pi over 2, and when we add pi, we get 3 pi over 2. Now, if I add another pi to 3 pi over 2, that's going to be past 2 pi. So that's it for that solution. Let's move on to the next two. So pi over 6 is right here. If I add 2 pi to that, I'm going to be past 2 pi. So that's just pi over 6 and then 5 pi over 6. All right, I'm going to put this bird back in her cage. Man, she is really on me. Hold on just a second. And we're back. Okay, Pikachu is now in her cage. Moving on. So go ahead and see if you can try this next problem. The first thing you're going to notice in this you try is you've got, if this were x squared minus x equals 2 back in algebra 2, what would you do? You'd move the 2 over, and then you'd go ahead and you have a trinomial with the middle term, and you factor it. That's exactly what we're doing here. Okay? It's just instead of the x's, we've got secants. Go away, x's. There we go. So have you take a look here. So once I factored and set secant is equal to 2, we know that means that the cosine is equal to the reciprocal of 2 over 1, which is 1 half, and then the reciprocal of negative 1 over 1 is still negative 1. So where is the cosine equal to 1 half? Where is the cosine equal to negative 1? And then normally you would write the general form of the solution, which I did not here. They'd just be pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And I said, if I add 2 pi to pi over 3, I know I'm just going to get pi over 3 as my only solution. Same for 5. So here's pi over 3, here's 5 pi over 3, and here's pi. I mean, I add pi to that, I'm going to get 0. That's going to be a positive 1. So I can go ahead and stop. So those are my solutions for the U try. Moving on. All right, this is where i got to be careful, and this is where I made my mistake in my last video. So I go ahead and look at this. If these were x's, if this was like 16x minus some number, you know, equals 0, you would move the number to the other side, and you then you divide by 16. That's exactly what we're going to do here. i got to be careful here. If I was in class, I'd have you guys watching my work, but nobody's watching my work. All right, so i got 16, whoops, 16 sine of 3x equals 8 ooh, root 3. Divide both sides by 16, and I'm getting the sine of 3x. I'm trying to write small because I know I'm going to run out of room. Equals uh, 8 divided by 16, 
right? So I'm going to end up with root 3 over 2. Okay, now I've got this sine of 3x. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use u substitution. I'm going to let 3x equal u. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as the sine of u equals root 3 over 2. And now I'm going to solve this just like I would using the unit circle. Well, where does the sine equal root 3 over 2? Here and here. Boom, boom, tall angles. Okay, so continuing on, I'm going to rewrite my solutions here as u equals, I got pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And I've also got u equals um, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And just getting those values from the unit circle. Okay, now I'm going to substitute back in 3x equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And 3x here equals 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. All right, this is where I ran into issues last time. When you are dividing, everything has to be divided by 3, right? And since we don't divide fractions by numbers, we always multiply by the reciprocal. That's like pi over 3 divided by, or multiplied by 1 third. So that's pi over 9. So I've got plus, now this 2 pi k also has to be divided by 3. So I'm going to write that as, I don't know, 2 thirds pi k. And this one's going to be x equals, and this is 2 pi divided by 9 plus 2 thirds pi k. Now, what we have to do is we have to write all these solutions out until we get to 2 pi and then stop. So, I mean, I'm going to definitely pi over 9. Now, if I add 2 thirds to that, and that's the same as um, 2 thirds, how many ninths? Oh, that's a 3. Okay, how many ninths is that? Okay, so that's 3 over, if I multiply by 3, I'm going to get, this is one whole, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, that's 6 ninths. So I'm going to keep adding 6 ninths until I get to, erase, go away, there we go, until we get to 2 pi and then stop. Okay, so if I add um, 6, uh, sorry, um, 6 pi over 9 to pi over 9, I'm going to get 7 pi over 9. All right, that is still under 2 pi. And if I add another 6 pi over 9, I'm going to get 13 pi over 9. And that's still under 2 pi because 2 pi is, in terms of ninths, 18 pi over 9. That's equal to 2 pi. If I add another 6, I'm going to get 19 pi over 9. And that's more than 18 pi over 9. So I'm stopping with that one. And I'm going to the next general solution. And I'm going to list out those pairs now. So these numbers don't have to be in order, as you can see. Okay, so now I'll get 2 pi over 9. If I add 7 pi over 9, wait, no, 6 pi over 9, right? 2 plus 6 is 8. That's still under 2 pi. And then that's going to be 14. And then I would stop. And I think those are all the possible solutions up to 2 pi. Okay, so we still have the same directions where we have to solve on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. I look at this b and I notice, okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and use u substitution here because I've got a 2x and I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to say let u equal 2x. So I just rewrite the whole equation, but instead of u, I'm going to, uh, sorry, instead of 2x, I'm going to put in u, right? Now, the next thing I look at is I've got a cosine, I've got a plus a number, and then I've got a sine squared on the other side, okay? I don't have a sine squared plus a cosine squared. I don't, I, this is going to cause me issues unless I substitute something in. So I'm going to choose. Now, there are all different tools you can use, and this is just manipulating. I know there's a lot of what we're doing this year is manipulating things to look how we want them to look, which is kind of fun, I think. I am going to substitute 1 minus cosine squared in for sine squared using the Pythagorean identity. When I do that, now if I distribute this 2, I'm going to end up with a cosine squared and a number and a cosine. That's going to end up, if I shove it all to one side, that's going to be a quadratic um, trinomial that I can factor. So, again, sine, shoot, sine squared of x plus, I'm just using x, plus cosine squared of x equals 1. If I choose to subtract cosine squared from both sides, 
1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So I am just substituting this stuff in for sine squared. Okay, that's all I did there. Moving on. Now, I'm going to distribute the 2, and then I'm going to shove everything to the same side. So when I shove everything to the same side, I've got a trinomial that I factor and set each of these factors equal to 0 using the zero product property. Then I just solve those equations, use the unit circle, find my solutions. Now this is this is u, right? We're going to have to now sub, uh, write the general form of your equations here. And then we're going to have to substitute 2x back in. Once we've substituted 2x back in, we're going to have to divide through that entire equation by 2, everything. The 2 thirds pi and the 2 pi k, everything by 2. When we do that, we end up with general solutions, x equals pi over 3 plus pi k, and x equals 2 pi over 3 plus pi k. Now that's just for um, the left factor here that I isolated. Now I'm going to do the right one. So where is the cosine of u equal to negative 1? That is equal u equals pi plus 2 pi k. There's their general solution. Okay. Now we substitute the 2x back in for x, divide the entire equation through by 2. Once we do that, we have the general form of the solution for the actual equation, not for the u, for the x. Now we're just going to count, now that we have 1, 2, 3 solutions, general solutions, those aren't, we're looking for just the solutions on the interval. So I started with pi over 3, and I added pi to that in terms of thirds, so that's 3 pi over 3. So I added 3 pi over 3. Okay, now if I add another 3 pi over 3, I'm going to get 7 pi over 3, which is bigger than 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. So I have to stop and go to 2 pi over 3. Okay, plus another 3, three thirds gives me 5 thirds, and then I stop. And then I go to pi over 2. If I add pi over 2, I get 3 pi over 2. Anything past that is going to be greater than 2 pi. And there are our solutions. So I'll show you the solution to this last one here. This is, an, I think this is an interesting one because we've got pi here in our x. So when I go ahead and move this 3 to the other side first, and then I see the cosecant of pi x equals negative 2, well, uh, pi x is just funky. So let's go ahead and let u equal pi x, and we'll deal with u instead. Cosecant of u equals negative 2, so that means the sine of u is one, uh, negative 1 half. Where is the sine equal to negative 1 half? Okay, so that's at negative 1 half, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Use u substitution. Go ahead and substitute pi x back in. When you do that, you're going to have to divide this entire equation through by pi, right? So that's going to be divided by pi. It's going to be divided by pi. And what happens is these pi's cancel. All the pi's cancel. So we end up with 7, 6 plus 2 times k. So we're going to be adding 2, not 2 pi. Same with 11, 6. We're going to be adding 2. Okay, so 2 in sixths, but we want to add it up to 2 pi. Well, what does that equal as a number? Well, that's like if pi is approximately 3.14, 2 pi is approximately 6.28. Okay, that's just in my head. So I need numbers, you know, up to up to that value here. So let's go ahead and start. 7, 6 is under 6.28. Okay, so if I add uh, 2 to that, so that's 12 sixths, I'm going to get 19 sixths. That's still under 6. If I add another 12 sixths, I'm going to get 31 sixths. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. So I'm pretty close to 2 whole right there. But I know that if I add another um, 2 to that, that I'm going to be above 6. So I stop, and I go to 11 over 6. And I go ahead and I add 2 to that in terms of sixths. So that's 12 sixths. 12 sixths. Now, 6 times 6 is 36. That, that number, 35 sixths, is almost 6. So, uh, sorry, 36 divided by 6 would be 6, right? Well, we only need these numbers to go up to 6.28. So I am not going to add another 2 to that. I'm going to have to stop. And we're done. 
And here is the you try if you'd like to look at it.